Hello again, Year 10. So this lesson, we're going to find the surface area of a triangular prism. You need to make sure you've got the worksheet in front of you. It's the one on Go for Schools, and I also attached a link to the checklist. Here are your do now questions. Remember to find the area of a triangle. You need to do half multiplied the base times the height. Press pause, and when you're ready for the answers, press play. Here are the answers. So for the first one, it has an area of 35 centimetres squared. The second triangle has an area of 17.5 centimetres squared. The third triangle has an area of 10.5 centimetres squared. When you're describing the faces of triangular prism, that's what shapes are the faces. So we have two triangles and three rectangles. And a triangular prism has a net that looks like this. So now let's find the surface area. So here's a diagram of a prism. The cross section of the prism is an isosceles triangle, and we've got to find the surface area. Now a prism is just a generic name for any three dimensional shape in which you can slice it and all the slices will be the same shape. So in this case, all the slices would look like triangles. So to help me define the surface area of this shape, I'm going to draw a net. But before I do that, I'm just going to add a couple of more lines to my diagram so I can see what all the faces look like. OK, so now I can see that the base of my triangular prism is a rectangle. And then coming off of the base, I have a triangle front and back. And then the two sides are also rectangles. So I have a left hand side rectangle and I have a right hand side rectangle. When I've drawn my net, I can add in my dimensions. Okay, when I've put in my dimensions and drawn a net, I can then label my different shapes, A, B, C, D and E, and I can find the area of each of those individual shapes. So first of all, I have two triangles uh, labelled A and B. And remember, the area of a triangle is half times base times height. So A is half times six times four, which is 12 centimetres squared. B will also be 12 centimetres squared because they're the same dimensions. For C, I have a rectangle that is five by 20, which is 100. Uh, D is a rectangle with a base of 6 and a height of 20, so 6 times 20. And finally, E has dimensions of 5 times 20. So now I've found the area of all of those shapes, I can then add those together to find the total area of the shape, which is 344 centimetres squared. So by thinking about what shapes make up our prism, we can actually find the surface area without having to draw a net. So I can see on this one, I have a front and a back made up of two triangles. The height of my first triangle is three centimetres, the base is four, so half times three times four. And the back is also going to be half times three times four. Now be careful you don't use that five centimetres. Remember when you're finding areas, we don't use those sloping sides. So front and back are half times three times four. And because there are two sides, I'm just going to multiply that by two to give an answer of 12 centimetres squared. OK, when we look at our base of the triangular prism, I can see it's a rectangle four times two. The side of my Rect, uh, prism is a triangle, a uh, rectangle, sorry, which has a height of three and a base of two. You can see that it's parallel to the end, so that's three times two, which is six centimeters squared. And finally, that sloping side is a rectangle lying at an angle, so we can use the five centimeters because if we stood it upright, that would be the height. Five times two is ten centimeters. So now I would add all of those answers together to give me a total surface area of 36 centimetres squared. Now press pause and have a go at questions one to six on the worksheet. When you're ready, you can press play again and we'll go through some more examples. 
So here's one final example. This one's a bit tricky. We've been given the total surface area of the shape, but we're missing one of the lengths. But I'm going to actually go about it exactly the same way. I'm going to find the areas of all the sides using the information I'm given. So first of all, the front and back of this triangular prism, I'm going to do half times five times 12. And because there are two sides like that, I'm going to times that by two. So half times five times 12 times two, because there are two sides, is 60 centimetres squared. Now, the base of my prism is a rectangle. Rectangle is base times height. I know the base is 12, but I'm not sure about how that other side. So I just write that as 12 times X, because that's all I've been given. And 12 times X is 12 X centimetres squared. Now, it's only the centimetres that are squared. The numbers aren't squared, the x's aren't squared, it's just 12x. So the left hand side, that's a rectangle, it has a height of 5 and we don't know the base, the base is x, so 5 times x, which is 5x centimetres squared. And finally that sloping side, the base of that is x and the height of that is 13. So although we don't normally use sloping sides, this is actually a rectangle that's sloping, so that 13 is the height of the rectangle if we were to put it up the right way. So 13 times x, 13x. Now I'm going to add those together. I've got my 60 centimetres and I've got 12x, 5x and 13x. So I'm going to add the x's separately. This gives me an answer of 60 plus 30x centimetres squared. Now, I haven't finished the question. I still need to work out the value of x. So what I'm going to do is use my answer to form an equation. I was told that the total surface area is 810 centimetres squared. And I now know that if I add up all those surfaces, I've got 60 plus 30x centimetres squared. So I'm going to form an equation 60 plus 30x equals 810. Now when you're solving equations you want numbers one side, letters the other, so I need to subtract 60. This gives me that 30x equals 750 and so to find the value of 1x I need to divide by 30. So 750 divided by 30 gives me a final answer of 25. So x equals 25. Now have a go at the very last question on that worksheet and if you need any help please email me.